I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we are starting to dive into some of the PID tuning parameters of Betaflight 4.0. And the gist of tuning Betaflight 4.0 is actually no different than tuning anything that came before it. The P, the I, and the D more or less work the same. But Betaflight 4.0 has added some additional dynamic elements to the PID tuning. And the one we're going to look at today is called D min. And it is basically a dynamic D term. What's that? And why is it good? And how do you make sure it's working the best for you? That's what we're going to talk about today. This is the first of my Betaflight 4.0 videos where I'm starting to dive into PID tuning Betaflight 4.0. This video is part of a playlist of all my Betaflight 4.0 videos. If you want to check that out, it's linked in the video description. Now, Betaflight 4.0 has a PID controller, just like the, all, all the Betaflights before it and all the other flight controllers on the market. And if you want to know basically what the P, the I, and the D of a PID controller do, there's another playlist in my video description down below, PID Tuning Masterclass, and that gives you the basic. It's actually based on a much older version of Betaflight, but it turns out that the P, the I, and the D, they still kind of do the same thing that they always did. If you need that refresher or a foundation, that's a good thing to check out. And the Demon function tries to address this kind of love-hate relationship that we have with the D term of the PID controller. Because if the D term is not active enough, you get really bad bounce back on flips and rolls and you get terrible prop wash oscillation. You simply cannot address these things effectively in a quadcopter without a D term. But if the D term is too active, if you have too much D gain, then you smoke motors. Literally, the motors will just burn themselves up because the D term amplifies high frequency vibration. The whole thing we're trying to do with quadcopters is get rid of high frequency vibration. That's why we've got low pass filters and notch filters and RPM filters. And yet the D term is there going, nah, let's get more of that stuff. So we can't live with the D term and we kind of can't live without it. And that's where the D min function comes in. Here's what the D min function does in a nutshell. Normally, when you're just kind of cruising in a straight line, there's actually not that much for the D term to do. It's only when the quadcopter is making rapid moves like sharp flips and rolls or in prop wash scenarios that the D term needs to be active. So what D min does is it detects when the quadcopter is doing a rapid move or it detects when prop wash is about to occur and it unleashes the D term. It says, do your worst. And then when that is over, <clears throat> kind of puts the D term back in the box. It says, no, calm down, stay down. Here in Betaflight 4.0, we'll go to the PID tuning tab and we'll see that here in the PID section, there is a P and I and a D gain just like before, but there's an additional parameter, the D min. And the way this works is that when you are flying just straight and level, the D term is reduced down to the D min value. And there's a separate D min for pitch roll and yaw, just like there's a separate D gain for pitch roll and yaw. When you deflect the stick to do a rapid stick movement, or when the PID controller detects that prop wash is about to occur, then it boosts the D term up to this value. And that's basically how it works. And what this means is that when D min is tuned properly, you can safely raise your D gains to the point where they correctly deal with prop wash and sharp flips and rolls without risking smoking motors the rest of the time. So it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario. A lot of times when you're trying to tune prop wash oscillation, you'll raise the D gains and the prop wash will get better and better. And then you'll start getting hot motors and you'll go, oh, I got to stop. But your prop wash isn't fully fixed yet and you're kind of up against a wall. You can fix that by adding more filtering, but more filtering adds latency and that cools your motors down, but it makes your prop wash worse. So you just kind of get boxed into this area where you simply can't improve the tune of the quadcopter anymore. So d -min lets you raise the D term to the point where it fixes prop wash oscillation during when prop wash oscillation is happening, but the D term goes down to this lower value. The rest of the time, your motors stay cool, your prop wash is perfect, la di da, everything is wonderful. How then are you supposed to tune this? Well, the first thing you should do is you should fly your quad. And if your quad flies great, then don't worry about it. <laughs> 
right? We always think about PID tuning as an end to itself, but if you have wonderful prop wash oscillation and no bounce back on flips and rolls, then you don't even need to think about this. Stop, video's over, go on with your day. If you're having bounce back on flips and rolls and prop wash oscillation is not controlled, then you're gonna to wanna to raise the derivative term here, the D term on the pitch or roll axis, depending on which one is experiencing the prop wash. Um, you could raise them both, or you could use black box log viewer to see which one is having the most oscillation, or you could use a trial and error approach where you raise one and you see if the prop wash gets better, and then you raise the other and you see if the prop wash gets better. By raising the max, you will allow the D term to rise higher, but during normal cruising flight, the D term will go back down to that min value. What about tuning that min value? You see, when I first heard about this, I thought, well, why don't you just turn the D min down to zero? Because during cruising flight, you really don't actually need the D term hardly at all. And the problem with that is that if D min is too low, it takes some time to get from D min to the actual D value when it boosts. And the lower that D min is, the longer it will take to get up to the desired value, and then you won't get as good at prop wash handling. So you don't wanna set D min arbitrarily low, but what you can do is you can raise D min maybe until you kind of start to get slightly warm motors and then back it down a few points from there. And that's kind of your threshold where the motors stay cool. Or if your motors are kind of warm, you would lower D min just a little bit from whatever value it's at. So think of D min as kind of managing the temperature of your motors. If your motors are warm, lower it a little bit. If they're cool, you could afford to raise it a little bit and the, the D term will be a little bit more effective. There's two other parameters that we need to look at here and one is the gain and one is the advance. D gain determines how strong the boost to D is. It determines how likely the D term is to boost up from D min to its max value or how abruptly you need to move the stick in order to get the D gain to boost. And I'll show you in a minute how you can use the Betaflight OSD to determine whether that's working for your particular quad. But the devs have said that the default value is probably appropriate for most quads. D advance determines how quickly the D gain will boost up. You see, the thing is that normally the D term will not start to boost until after you move the stick and after the quad begins moving. By adding some advance value, it will cause the quad to sort of anticipate the need to boost D. But if, if done too much, then we could get into a scenario where D is boosting when it doesn't actually need to. These two are a little trickier to tune and probably most people should leave them at the defaults and just adjust the D min and the D gain. One more thing to point out. If you have a quadcopter that's flying great, that's relatively clean, you can disable this setting. And the way that you do it is by setting the D min values to zero on the given axis, and then the D term will simply be at its set value. This is a much simpler way to approach PID tuning, and if you have a clean quad that has no prop wash and smooth motors and cool motors, you might just disable this and go on about your day. The real people who are gonna benefit from this are people who are in that tuning box where you need more D gain, but you can't get it because your motors are hot. These are the people who need D min. Here in the OSD tab, there is an OSD element that we're gonna to use to tune the D min parameter, and that's the debug element. And when I turn that on, it's gonna put four numbers on my screen. And of these four numbers, the ones we're most concerned with are the last two. The second to last one is the D value right now for the roll axis, and the, the fourth one is the D value right now for the pitch axis. So we can monitor these values as we fly and we can see how the D term is responding to our flight conditions. So we're gonna save that OSD setting and then we're gonna to need to go into the CLI and we're gonna set debug mode equals D min. And that's gonna control what that OSD debug parameter is, uh, is displaying for us. And now we're gonna go fly. Convenient, my battery's just finished charging. Okay, so if you look at the debug, the last two numbers are 200 and 220. Those are the D gains for roll and pitch. So right now they're at 20 and 22, which is the minimum value. And you should see that as I take off and start to fly, when I enter sharp moves or prop watch situations, they boost themselves up to 35 and 37. Let's watch. I should also mention that I'm intentionally doing this 
with a set of messed up props. They're not the worst ever, but if I want to generate a little additional noise, so I'm kind of tuning for a worst case scenario. And what I'm seeing here is what's ideal. What I want to see is that as I'm flying, the D terms are being slightly boosted, but not too much, just during normal cruise. They're just barely sort of off the peg, if you will. They're not just resting down at that 20 value with no boost at all. And as they start to push a little bit, we should see them get boosted just a little more. So if I go to higher throttle, we should see them get into a sharp turn. We should see them start to get boosted a little more. But they're still mostly uh, not too good. Now if I really start pushing into prop wash turns, let's see what happens. They never did get, they are never really getting up to maximum, are they? Even when I do, oh, battery's kind of falling out. And again, I don't often do super aggressive. There we go, there I hit it. Yeah, during that, see that's when I hit it, watch. See, it's going to max when I do a full stick move like that. And we got a little bounce back there. We might add a little bit of D gain. Yep, roll is going to 35 and pitch it. Okay, so that's better. So that's how I need to, I need to see that I'm hitting those values when I do the full stick moves, but that it's not coming sort of, it's just gently cruising that's slightly off the minimum when I'm normally flying. Hey, it's Joshua from the future here. Uh, yeah, I can see that something's up with this quad. In fact, I think the flight awesome. controller might be a little screwed up. You see how it's kind of going, whoop, 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 That's not beta flight 4.0, that's this quad. I got a bad motor or a bad gyro or something, but I didn't want to throw out this whole freaking video just for that, so. So that is the D-min parameter in Betaflight 4.0, a great tool for people who need higher D gains but don't want to risk getting hot motors. Tune your D gain as before. Uh, add D gain to reduce bounce back on sharp flips and rolls and improve prop wash handling. Um, tune the D-min to control the temperature of the motors and probably leave the gain and the advance alone. However, if you see that your, your Ds are basically just sitting down at the minimum value and not coming up off the minimum, then you may want to ad adjust the D gain, raise the D gain. If you see that in normal slow forward flight, your Ds are rising too abruptly, too aggressively, you may want to lower the uh, D min gain. That's basically it. One more thing to say, and that is that if you want an even deeper dive into this topic, you got to check out the YouTube channel of Mark Spatz. His YouTube channel is UAV Tech, and he is one of the foremost authorities on YouTube into Betaflight, PID tuning, filter tuning, black box, etc., the kind of stuff that I used to do back in the day. <sighs> he is amazing. There's a link to his video about D-Min down in the video description, and he's got another video talking about how maybe instead of thinking of D-min as decreasing the D-term, maybe what you want to think of it as, as boosting the D-term and how to take care of that. Links to those videos down in the video description if you want to dive a little deeper. I do want to take a second to remind you that making videos like this is my full-time job, and if you feel like you learned something and that makes you want to support me, there's various ways you can do that down in the video description. Check those out as well. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.